at the time of the Occupy movement, I was uh, moved by the protests in St. Agnes Square. Of course, we see the yellow vests in France at the moment fighting their own battle with the fascist Macron. Um, and at that time that the evictions were happening at St. Paul's, I wrote this song, which is after the epic poem by Aaron Yanos, the Hungarian poet, and it's called The Celtic Bards Speak Out. And the bards of Wales would not give praises to the conquering Edward. Instead, they spoke words of truth in poem and song, made insolence by violence of the crown, and they were burnt at the stake for the truth they spake. What principality this that burns its priests for speaking truth against the tyrant? The bards of Cymru Air, Cornwall, Britain, St. Agma and St. Paul's reach out to us across the energy of reincarnated spirit and language, past heroes' deeds and words, emulated to assuage. At once the tyrant tribute sought, these new Caesars take all, yet offer naught. Once more we offer insolence in poetry, song, rhyme and reason to tell the truth that's painted treason. The other evening I was uh, thinking about things and thinking about Brexit and I was uh, provoked into thinking about this by the blogger John Ward, uh, the slog, and uh, that familiar cry, oh so familiar cry of something must be done, what can we do about our elected representatives um, representing themselves and the interests of their own international hybrid class and not the uh, interests of those of us out in the country at the coalface, I mean, as it were. Um, and I, I, I wrote this short bit. When I'm gone and hopefully forgotten, in which I will have achieved a minimal disturbance, perhaps this will speak for me. Had I thought deeply enough and spoke up for those suffering injustices? Did I embrace the love in my heart and the empathy in my soul over the fear and the anger? which challenged my sense of right and wrong? Did I share my truth in the face of my own embarrassment and offer that truth with equanimity to those who I knew might not thank me for it? In a testament to leaving nothing behind of lasting hurt, perhaps a pang of grief, and to be missed when someone wants to laugh at a fart in the living years always makes me cry. I wasn't there that morning when my father passed away. I didn't get to tell him all the things I had to say. And that's a wonderful song by Paul Carrick, um, which uh, I mentioned. And um, I've, I've written a novel over the last two or three years called Conquest of Doe, and three epic poems which kind of support the themes within the novel. Um, and. Uh, one of those poems is, is, is Globalisations Untangled, which is a, uh, a, a Dadaist poem, um, and uh, there are instructions in how to do uh, such a thing. Um, I mean, if you do happen to read it, um, the notes are, I think, worth reading, um, because it covers quite a lot of, of reading into a lot of things which don't get regurgitated. They, they, they're, they're put in what I call the, uh, the, the, the memory hole. Um, now, this bit here um, comes from a criticism partly that Orwell, um, George Orwell wrote of um, a publication from back in the 1930s by a chap called Mr. Strait or Sprite um, and uh, I'm just going to read this bit here um, on the screen this bit here um, and 
it takes in a bit of HG Wells as well. But uh, anyway, Mr. Streets Union and Mr. Orwell's niggers, not counting niggers, the others not like us. 600 million disenfranchised, is it more today? Russia is brazenly refusing to learn from the EU's mistakes and may walk directly into its trap. How can banking unions serve the tributaries of society? Pigs do not fly nor water flow uphill. Real brothers can curse each other friends some day. Britannia will give Columbia a piece of her mind. Elysium also needs telling, and she is curiously afflicted, offering no teat for the eastern bear. An exasperated Englishman, I pray to God they keep out of the end of this war anyhow. We shall never hear the last of it if they don't. Kabbalists, Gnostics, Manichaeans, an old man of the mountains, Knights Templars, Satanists, Rosicrucians, Illuminati, Freemasons, Rosso, Voltaire, Kovilostro, Madame Berlatsky, Mrs. Besant, trade unions, anarchists, socialists, theosophists, communists, those Bolsheviks, a frightful horde, all plotting and getting hold of power and handling it on and doing down Christianity and the Christian life. Three factors in everyone, Sir Arthur Salter. For example, shall we never pluck the best from the peace? And so it goes on. Um, perhaps the ramblings of a sad, white, middle-aged Welshman sat in rural Sweden. But um, one of my hashtags is uh, Just Swe uh, Bourgeois en Blanc. And yes, I'm a white middle class man, but I don't recognise any of myself <laughs> in the epithet um, of gammon. <laughs> uh, uh, whilst some of these uh, sentiments that I express may come across as all gammonish, um, I reject that characterization. So moving on, um, Ceterum sensio carthenigem s deladam nile sub soli novum, which is uh, Carthage must fall. Um, my Latin and my Greek is uh, unschooled, as they say. And then moving on to a bit of Burke, uh, I recommend anyone to read his essay on the present discontents. Um, and I've highlighted down here uh, a relevant passage. Um, there it is, just there, um, which basically says. Uh, that it's not the people that are at fault, but um, their impatience in suffering is, uh, is perfectly understandable sometimes, and in those times it's much easier to change the government than to change the people. Um, it may well be, um, it's certainly my opinion, that the government does need to be changed in Britain, but it's also true that the government needs to be changed in Europe, and Europe should not be ruled by the Commission with their exclusive competences on monetary policy. Um, that's, that's my view, um, and uh, it's a view that's shared by lots of people, uh, big C Conservatives, small C Conservatives, big L Labour, even some new Labour people, but not many, um, and uh, effectively um, if you believe in the conservative ideal of liberty, um, in a Burkean sense, um, like for instance, say S Steve Baker or um, David Davis, um, or one of my favourites, Peter Hitchens, um, you'll get a sense of where we're coming from. Um, and uh, again, whilst we forwards, uh, called our backs the girls in the backs or the blouses in the backs 
and all of that sort of thing, uh, we are a team across a political spectrum um, where we have a virtuous care for our uh, communities um, and uh, a right of recall um, of people who are sent up to Parliament, regardless of the debate about it being a representative democracy, etc. Um, we are not being served, we are being misgoverned, um, and the rebellion starts here. Um, we all must draw a line and refuse to cooperate with this misgovernment. There is an old saying about it's, uh, it's easier to deal with a threat from without, but the most destructive threat that is, is, is a threat with it from, that comes from within a fifth column. Um, and uh, I mean, classical scholars out there will get the reference that I'm getting. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's not important. The general, um, the, the, the general gist is this: if you cast your minds back and recall the resignation of Sir Geoffrey Hyle um, at the beginning of the downfall of Margaret Thatcher, which was all around the European question of the federalisation of Europe when Margaret Thatcher gave that famous speech in Parliament in which she said, non, non, non. And Mr Howe, uh, as we're on cricketing metaphors, gave his metaphor about a batsman being sent out to bat with one arm tied behind his back or whatever. I mean, look it up, you will find it. Um, now, that metaphor, um, is apt today and the question is have we really fielded a team have we fielded a team it's not time to draw stumps this is not limited over cricket for the time limit this isn't even just a test match this is a test series and this is the ashes what I'm saying is whilst the ashes were over the honour of English cricket playing the Australians this isn't a game I don't say just a game because cricket isn't just a game not in my opinion, and rugby neither. It's a uh, it's philosophy. But if the ashes of the British Isles, if the ashes of the British Constitution are to come about, it will be over the ashes of my dead body and the dead bodies of all the patriots that do believe that the Union Jack, Queen and Country, the ability to defend our way of life does count for something. So just on that, let's take some Shelley. And this is the Francis Thompson essay on Shelley which I'm not going to read or quote from. Um, he does quote uh, William Blake in it, uh, holding a single grain in one's hand and seeing eternity. Now, William Blake wrote the hymn Jerusalem, or the hymn Jerusalem is taken from William Blake, um, Blake's poem. What I'm actually going to refer to is actually an article which Paul Foote wrote some years ago uh, in the International Socialist Review. Now this essay, Shelley the Trumpet of Prophecy, touches on parts of British history, particularly the Peterloo Massacre and the Mask of Anarchy, that famous poem by Shelley. And it also refers to Shelley's epic poem Queen Mab 
and Queen Mab contrasts a kind of a Humean is ought dichotomy of what could be and what was. And remember, Percy Bush Shelley, his wife was Mary Shelley, and Mary Shelley wrote that popular classic Frankenstein. And in throwing out that image of Frankenstein, the European Commission is Frankenstein. It is the monster that is still in the act of creation. It's still trying to perfect its dystopian vision. So let's go to school with the poets. Let's take some inspiration from the poets and let's hold our executive to account, let's hold the establishment to account. Enough of the fourth estate abdicating its responsibility of holding the other three estates to account. We draw a line in the sand this far and no further. We will send our best batsmen into bat. We will send out the first team onto the park. We will not be cowed and we will not be dictated to by unelected bureaucrats in Brussels. Our British sense of fair play, of honour, of virtue may be battered, may be bloody, but we are definitely not unbowed.